Hello and welcome to uh, the fourth day of our squeeze lessons. Uh, we're learning about composition of functions today. Here are some answers from the previous day's homework. You can pause it if you'd like. Go through it a little bit slower. All right, today's lesson, we're going to be given two functions and then represent a composition graphically, numerically, and algebraically. So first we have to look back and do a little bit of review of actual functions before we look at composition. If I have x, I send it into f, and I get out f of x equals x squared plus 3x minus 2. If I put a 2 and apply the same principles, I would get 2 squared, which is 4, plus 2 times 3, which is 6, minus 2. That's 10 minus 2, which is 8. Now if I put a negative 1 through the same situation, negative 1 squared is 1, uh, that would be a minus 3, minus 2, so that would give us negative 4. It gets a little trickier when we have variables, because when we put variables in, we have to put parentheses around them. So it would be 2t squared plus 3 times 2t minus 2. So with this would be 2t squared would be 4t squared, 2 times 3 is 6t, and then minus 2. All right. h plus 3, one extra step here. h plus 3 squared plus 3 times h plus 3 minus 2. Well, h plus 3 squared is the same thing as h plus 3 times h plus 3, which is h times h, the first, which is h squared, the outsides, which is 3 times h, the insides, which is 3 times h, and then the last, which is 3 times 3, which is 9. So we combine this to be h squared plus 6h plus 9. So that's just this section. So h squared plus 6h plus 9, and then this would be 3h plus 9 if I distribute, and then minus 2. So now I add up all my h squareds, which is just h squared. I add up all my h's, which is 6h plus 3h, so I have 9h. And then three or 9 plus 9 minus 2 would be 16. All right, so if we have that, now here's an example of a composition function in the real world. If I drop a pebble into a pond, a circular ripple extends out from that drop point. The radius of that circle is a function of time. So radius will increase as time increases. The area of the circle enclosed by the ripple is a function of the radius. We know that the area of the circle is a function of the radius, and the radius of is a function of time, so the area is a composite function. That's what a composite function is all about. So let's suppose that the uh, radius increases at a constant rate of 6 centimeters per second. So if we wanted to make an equation for that, it would be r of t equals 6t, because at 1 second it would be 6, at 2 seconds it would be 12, 3 seconds, uh, 18, and so on and so on. So if I want to find an expression for the area enclosed in the circle as a function of time, we have r of t equals 6t, area of r, so if, we're, if we have the area um, in terms of our radius, area of a circle is pi r squared. So now if I want my area in terms of time, well this r is the radius, which increases at a rate of 6t. So I can have 6t go in for a radius. So this would be my area as a function of time. So this would be 36 pi t squared for the formula for my area as a function of time. So at 2 seconds, I do 2 squared times 36, multiply that times pi, and that will be the area of that circle at, after 2 seconds. All right, algebraically, if I have f of g of 2, I put 2 into the function of g first. 
So 2 squared is 4. So now, since this is equal to 4, I, now I have f of 4. To find f of 4, 4 plus 4 is 8. Now g of f of 4, f goes into this function, 4 plus 4 is 8. So g of 8, plug it into this function, 8 squared is 64. Back to this one, g of negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1. Put f of 1, 1 plus 4 is 5. g of g of 3, it looks a little bit different, but not. that just means we don't have to deal with f at all. g of 3 is going to be 9, so now I have g of 9 left over. Now I plug that back into g, 9 squared is 81. All right. So now if I have f of g of x, so I put x into g, and so I have x squared. So now I have f of x squared. Now I put x squared into f. x squared plus 4 is my answer. Now I'll do it the opposite way. I'll put x into f. x plus 4 is what I get out. So now I have g of x plus 4. Now I plug that into my g function, and I have x plus 4 squared, which if we FOIL it out like we did before, it would be x squared plus 8x plus 16. All right, now there's uh, two different ways we can uh, write this. We can have this f, and it looks like an o, but it's not a full o. Uh, it's kind of in the middle. This f of g is the same as f of g of x, and g of f is like g of f of x. All right, so if we do this algebraically, uh, g of x is this thing. If I put that in for f, we'll have uh f of 3x squared plus 4x plus 1. So that will be, if I put that in for this x, it will be 2, 3x squared plus 4x plus 1, minus 3. Or 6x squared plus 8x plus 2, minus 3. So we can... Simplify it one more step, 6x squared plus 8x minus 1. Now if I do g of f of x, it's going to be g of 2x minus 3, which would be um, 3 times 2x minus 3 squared plus 4 times 2x minus 3. Oh, that didn't come out right. Plus 1 or 3 times uh, 2x minus 3 squared is 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 3, which is 4x squared minus 6x minus 6x plus 9, or 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. So I can write that in here. 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. And then I have plus 8x minus 12 plus 1. So now I distribute to this part. So I have 12x squared minus 36x plus 27. And then put the rest of it, 8x minus 12 plus 1. So there's only 1x squared, which is 12x squared. Negative 36x plus 8x is minus 28x. 27 minus 12 is 15 plus 1 is 16. So that would be our answer. All right, now I'll let you guys do these algebraically. Pause the video and see what you get. All right, I uh, paused it myself and I went through the problems. The final answers, 8x 
over 7 minus 11 sevenths and 8x over 7 minus 1. Now the biggest mistake people will uh, make is stopping here when you can simplify this a little bit further because this is 10 sevenths minus 3 and 10 sevenths minus 3 would be 10 sevenths minus 21 sevenths which is negative 11 sevenths. All right, now if we do this numerically, this is using a table, we do the same thing. We start with g of 2 first. If x is 2, g of 2 is 3. So now I'm looking for f of 3. So if x is 3, my f of x will be 4. So the answer will be 4. And over here, if I have g of f of 3, f of 3, if x is 3, f is 4. So now I have g of 4. If x is 4, my g is 15. g of g of negative 1. Negative 1 would go over, and that's going to be 0. So now I'm finding g of 0. So if x is 0, my g value is negative 1. So that brings me back to its original. All right. Now if we do this graphically, g of 3, 1, 2, 3, will give us a y value of negative 1. So now if I type in f of negative, negative 1, if, I, if x is negative 1, my y value is negative 2. If I have g of f of 4, f of 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, that value is 1. g of 1 will give us a value of negative 2. Finally, a g of g of negative 1, if I do negative 1, my answer is negative 2. And g of negative 2 is also negative 2. Now you can do your homework. Good luck.